a thread by Pat Scopoliti. November 22nd, 2020, hashtag MAGA analysis. Vote fraud, too big to notice, or the fix is in. If you haven't watched Sidney Powell's interview in full, all 20 minutes, you'll simply be blown away when you do. I had to watch it twice with many pauses for notes. Link in the thread, Sidney Powell, it will be biblical. The worst thing I see on Fox in the few minutes we may still turn to it is that when commentators scoff over Cuba, China, Venezuela, and Hugo Chavez, I want to shout at them. Scoffing is not an argument. Sydney has established that the Dominion software was made at Hugo Chavez's specification in order to ensure he won every election. What I'd like to know of these TV scoffers is what part of that is hard to believe. I can offer my own theory on that point. In today's TV analysis world, we tend to have around a 24-hour cause and effect factor. What happened in the past 24 hours is what is causing what's happening now. That's it. No stretch back for weeks or months, let alone years or decades. Hogwash, I say. Hogwash. As you listen to Sydney, you have to give her at least the historical perspective of a couple of decades. And instead of scoffing, ask, why wouldn't Joe Biden employ tools built for Hugo Chavez? You see, when scoffing, you have no need even to address the facts. On point. I confess I was wrong in 2018, at least significantly, if not very possibly in whole. I just kept saying that we MAGA citizens failed to turn out in force, and that's how we lost the house. I blamed us. When you listen to Sydney, you can see I might have been wrong. What's more, many of my friends hit me back right here at Twitter with the persistent refrain of voter fraud. I didn't believe them. And on that point, I know I was 100% wrong. Honor to all of you who knew and tried to persuade me. You were right. I was wrong. And contemplate the consequences. Through voter fraud, the house is turned. Can you imagine the America we'd live in today if that had not occurred? We must consider the constitutional ramifications of this. Our constitution sets up the parameters of our democracy. How far back does it go that voting anyone out of office has been essentially impossible due to just this sort of fraud? In the video, Sydney tells us that electronic vote stuffing is really no different than it's ever been. In the past, paper, now, digits. It's still the same. So, how do you go about proving something this big? The main thing I learned watching the video about evidence is that there are different standards under different legal conditions. Criminal law demands proof beyond a reasonable doubt. In this case, not so. In the case Sydney is working on, the standard is a preponderance of evidence, a far lower bar to rise up to, and Sydney tells us her preponderance is overwhelming. She has already filed affidavits with witness testimony to crimes all over the country. I recently shared how Tucker took 20 minutes to not talk about the news. I told Kate Scopoliti he had been turned the moment he said that. Kate loves Tucker, so she gave him the benefit of the doubt. Last night, I got a, you were right, I was wrong out of her on that topic. I think that may be the third or fourth such victory in our 40 years together. Ha, <laughs> but it's truly sad when you listen to Sydney discuss it. It is easy for me to see Tucker's inexcusable rudeness as the result of his charge from the powers that be above him, his paymasters. I really did know it before. You Tucker fans will recall how UPS absconded with a flash drive on the Hunter Joe scandal. When he never pursued that story further, I really did know, but did not want to believe he'd been turned. Whatever happened to that scandal, by the way? Speaking of some of Tucker's better work on that scandal, take a look at this screenshot from Sydney's interview. I know it's familiar by now, but look at the red box, which I added. U.S. elections, the AP has called the presidential race for Joe Biden. See more on Google. 
One of the questions I loved the most was, how many people would have to be involved in such a conspiracy? And I called out thousands before I heard Sydney say the exact number. Maybe proud of myself. Truth is, it's thousands and thousands over decades and decades. Let's go back to Hugo Chavez and the inception of the Dominion Method. Sydney fearlessly questions whether or not our own CIA's hammer and scorecard structure was not the real basis of Dominion technology. Myself, I can't make myself doubt the tie. I just can't. Whenever you hear their scoffing denials, you can now know that the likelihood of the truth they deny being actually true is great. Hugo, Dominion, CIA, color revolutions, hammer and scorecard technology let them laugh nervously. We're facing a stolen election. The interviewers ask Sydney why Trump's DOJ isn't doing more. She answers, not only does Trump control the DOJ? Does Trump not control the DOJ? Neither does Bill Barr. Attorneys throughout the entire entity simply do what they want to do, and they give cover to all of these crimes. Follow it out. You and your cabal buddies have uncountable trillions of dollars on the line, and your protection entities at the DOJ and CIA are under threat. Do you think you might take this seriously? Here's another point too big for my brain to handle. Sydney states repeatedly that the Dominion technology was programmed to give every Democrat candidate a 35,000 vote lead from the get-go. What's more, she tells us that this is a feature of the system, so touted. You brilliant researchers out there may want to check to see if this is the right manual. If it is, I'm confessing I'm not up to reading its 74 pages. Do let me know what you get out of it, please, link in the thread. What was perhaps the single most stunning revelation Sydney shared was the system's ability to weight the votes. For example, a Trump vote gets 0.75 and a Biden 1.25. She explains that's how you turn a landslide victory into a defeat. The word shocking is too soft. We have a challenge here. We must either accept or reject Sydney's statements. You know where I stand. I trust Sydney. If, like me, you trust her too, then we can begin to see the looming fight more clearly. I recently posted a picture of Tahrir Square in Cairo, Egypt, where the Egyptian people turned out to oust the evil President Morsi, and they won. Here it is again. It's from November 27, 2012. It was an absolutely peaceful protest, and it completely succeeded. A big lie? A gigantic crime stretching over decades with thousands of people involved and uncountable millions of dollars. This can't be stopped without a big response. We know Sydney's doing her part. My question is, what is our part? Right here in social media, we can work on something like hashtag I trust Sydney, hashtag Trump landslide. Let us pledge ourselves. Never again. Will we allow voter fraud to steal our nation, our destiny, our republic? Never again, and not this time either.